So I met up with Wayne here this morning, final day of Distributech. Wayne, I was chatting with uh, JT, I think it was about two days ago, the week's been taking a long time. Yep, um, absolutely. And all around what you're doing with integration planning, integrated planning. And we were chatting about how what you're doing is bringing together the worlds of the distribution planning and the transmission planning and simulation because they used to be, oh, they, they are separate worlds. That is correct. So, so what are you up to? So essentially, uh, Kevin, the whole deal out there is DERs, right? DERs are, are being integrated onto the system extensively. Currently, our world, the, how the world exists is transmission guys use a transmission planning tool. Yeah. Distribution guys use their own distribution planning tool. Yeah. Right? But all of the DERs, the distributed energy resources, electric vehicle, battery storage, solar, solar panel, anything, is all coming on the distribution side. Now, think about it. Maybe today we're only at 40%. Maybe tomorrow we need to go all the way up to 100%. Am I going to start, is, is my current or uh, traditional ways of planning going to be enough? It's not going to reflect, reflect the real world. Anymore. Exactly. Physically, the grid's not going to be uh, reflected in the world of simulation. So what we're doing at Siemens, we have a tool, it's called SynCal. It is our DER integration tool, but the tool can also address uh, transmission and distribution as one single system. So the TSOs, if they're using our other tool, PSSC, which is our strong transmission planning tool, yeah. we can take a PSSC case into SynCal, we can take a case from G the GIS system or other applications, or even if it is already in SynCal. Now what we can do is we can stitch the two worlds together. Now, as more and more DERs are coming online on the distribution side, we can start seeing the impacts on the, the power flow on the transmission side. So this gives TSOs an added visibility on really what's going on behind my TSO boundaries. And, and what you were telling me when we uh, chatting earlier in the week was that balance system, unbalanced system, there's assumptions made in the models here that that's just a, a load and over here that's just a, what was it, a voltage source you had? It? That is correct. So currently how they do, how the TSOs run their analysis, they consider the, these little loads. Um, that that's basically the entire distribution feeder. So, 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 so this little thing is, is this right here. So the the and vice vice versa on the distribution side, the little in feeder is basically an infinite voltage supply. But that in feeder is reflecting this. The, the, the so there are some assumptions in the process. Right? But what we're doing um, with SynCal is we're trying to get away from assumptions where we're trying to reflect the physical aspects of the power system and we want to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples. And in, in a, a, a demo you were showing earlier in the week, you were able to kind of go through the day of a, a real feeder line where solar was coming on because the sun was coming up. That is correct. So and, and the power flows inside here were completely changing, but they were being reflected back into the TSO in exactly. real time. Exactly. So the idea behind that is once we have an integrated um, model, <laughs> where a balanced model on the transmission side, an unbalanced model on the distribution side, when I connect them, it's going to be one big unbalanced system. Every time the DER solars come online, so we get to like six in the morning, seven, eight, nine. Traditionally, power flows from transmission to distribution because that's where all the loads are. But now we're in this new situation where there's so much behind the meter, rooftop solar, there's so much DER on the distribution side that that's starting to self-sustain itself. And now what we're doing is we're actually pushing power the other way. Reverse power flow is what we call it. Yeah, so yeah. What, the, the, the feeder line is basically looking like a generator. Exactly. So now all of a sudden we have this shift in the industry, the shift in how the power, flow, the power is flowing and we need to start really, really closing in on that gap as far as how do we really consider the transmission and distribution as a whole? Because at the end of the day, this is one physical grid. True. The, the most complex real-time system on the planet. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Hey, good stuff. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate your time.